hesitate to even talk about this because it could be used against me and against my channel and against who I am as a person. And so to kind of hear somebody, hi everybody, this is Ray, this is Life and Vibe, and today I didn't really expect to make this particular video. And it's probably going to be a hard and difficult video for me to make. So I'm going to try to make it as quick as I can so I can just upload it and get it out. And you might be asking yourself, so if it's so hard for me to make, then why am I making this reaction today to Foodie Beauty's latest uh, reaction video called <laughs> Without Shocker? raging about a new series being made about me. <laughs> it's now going between her and Mr. Snowflake, and I think a lot of people are becoming more familiar with that. And I'm sorry, I'm supposed to have got my anti-glare glasses, and it's a story. Anyway, <laughs> I don't let things stress me out anymore, but this did stress me out. And part of the reason why I felt the need to talk about and look at this particular situation with Chantel is that I just hope in all honesty that she is not using a situation and embellishing a situation and using a situation to her advantage in order for her to get more sympathy from her subscribers and followers, what's known as her visas, and I feel that she is doing that preemptively before Mr. Snowflake releases his documentary series in order to kind of fend off some of the negative backlash and some of the negative reaction I think she's probably going to receive once this video actually is released by him. That is my thought. So she's trying to set herself up, uh, and I hate to use the word, but something of a victim. And I'm going to be careful with the language that I choose to use as I react to this video, because I would like to be able to get through the YouTube algorithm and the words that they deem to be not beneficial for use with an audience. So anyway, I'm just going to put out all my disclaimers and trigger warnings. And let's then just get into this reaction. Hello, foodie beauties. Right, hello. So, uh, today I woke up and chose violence. <laughs> um, this video is going to be me addressing these... Is that just a, supposed to be just starting out? Because what I'm going to talk about in my own life does include some violence. And so I hope that after the bad reception to the video of the true crime Canadian series where she giggled and laughed her way and mocked victims of assault so badly, now she's actually going to start using her own victimhood, and I'm going to use that phrase, um, to gain sympathy from an audience on YouTube. And I, I think it's appalling. Um, she needs to be stopped. Every one of her scams just needs to be stopped. And this is just, I'm usually laughing and having a good time and calling out her diabetes rage, which I will still do. But this is a whole different thing, and, and I'll tell you why as we get along. Dumb documentaries made about me. Well, they're not just about me. There are a lot made about other creators as well. Um, I'm doing this because there's a channel that, just like the rest, picks on content creators they see as failures, I guess. And it's usually... Um, either Amber Lynn or I, I find it weird that a grown man chooses to obsess over the lives of the two same women, basically beating a dead horse, but whatever. 
Now, I don't know why Mr. Snowflake chose you and Anne Berlin to be subjects for his documentaries. Uh, that's his reason and his reasons alone, and I'm sure he's given those reasons out. I'm just not, I've just not heard them. I'm not aware of them. What I am aware of, though, is that both you and Anne Berlin, for a number of years, have manipulated people on YouTube and your subscribers and members primarily in order to gain memberships, to gain following, and said for years that you're on this weight loss journey, these health journeys, that you're going to be taking care of your health. I mean, you just both have an unfortunate tendency to start things and you don't complete nor finish them. And that is a flaw in both of your, I don't want to say characters or personality, but it's just something that you have both not learned to do over your time, even as almost a 40 year old adult, is how to start and really finish something. And some of the things that Amber Lynn does is particularly childish, like all this Lego building and stuff. And both of you are, I mean, I understand, but you're both a little bit older. You've both made a lot of money from this channel and you've invested nothing. You've both squandered your money and the most crazy ways. And I think for a lot of us who are adults, it's mind blowing. So you need to kind of look at it from those of us who are maybe a little bit more responsible, whose backgrounds aren't dissimilar from yours, Chantal. Okay. Just saying. Speaking of beating dead horses, figuratively, not literally, of course, this new quote unquote docu-series uh, being made about me will not, by the way, spoiler, <laughs> will not contain anything new that you haven't heard a million times before. Also from uh, these few other overly dramatic, embellished, bullcrap documentaries. The difficulty at this moment, Chantal, is that, well, I know you love how I say your name, is that were you not affected or bothered or did not think it were important to you and you being so close to 100,000 subs on YouTube and wanting to get that platinum plaque, you would not be raging in this video. You just let it go, girl. That's what people who aren't bothered do. They let things go. But unfortunately, you don't let things go. You get really upset to the point where now you have a, you know, a ongoing like feud now. It's not even a feud, but it's a funny, um, you know, back and forth between you and Mr. Snowflake. And it's, he's playing on it because it's giving a lot of hype for his documentary that it's about to be released. I know you are somewhat of a savvy marketer and understand that if you were to get this and this sort of notoriety and your name really coming up in trending, then it's going to help you and your subs. Unfortunately, there are allegations made and some opinions out there that you have purchased a lot of your subs and YouTube's going to throw those out. So you better clean up your list, girl. All right, Chantal, I'm trying not to laugh because I know this is, you know, this, I'm going to get into a serious topic and I don't need to get super salty because then it's going to make me even more salty. All right. I don't want this to be long. Um, such as Canadian Horror Story, for example. First off, a documentary is supposed to be educational. There's nothing educational about me, <laughs> about these videos that you haven't heard a million times before. Also from uh, these few other overly dramatic, embellished, bullcrap documentaries, um, such as Canadian Horror Story, for example. First off, a documentary is supposed to be educational. There's nothing educational about me, <laughs> about these videos, because you are only able to make conclusions based on limited information about my life. What is educational about me eating and telling stories from my past, for example? I'll let you know. There's nothing educational about your past, except about the stuff you're about to get into. 
the eating is because you are a raging type 2 diabetic and you should not be out there showing people that you, sh you can be out there eating bread. I have a lot of people who come to my comments who discuss about loved ones themselves and other people they know who've had things with type 2 diabetes and appreciate somebody being pointed out for problematic behavior on the internet because it's wild out there and it's wild. And as a society, we just sometimes we just cannot let this keep perpetuating because our children are, are thinking that this is okay behavior and eating like, you know, all these huge quantities of food and it's causing health issues. So yeah, you're a problem right there, girl. So that's why you're a problem. Two, you're a medical scammer. You are making up, I think, and embellishing, in my opinion, as a registered nurse who is accustomed to doing assessments on people and having listened to the schematic story that you have told over the last couple of weeks, you have miraculously healed from your sciatica. And anybody who has had any experience with sciatica or worked with patients with sciatica know that is not humanly possible. But only you, Chantel. And we all are thinking and we are potentially wondering if you are not borrowing the story from your deceased grandmother. Because she can't say whether or not that sounds more like her sciatica. And so you, it's easy for you to Google up a few medications, but your lack of detail when you start to tell your medical stories is terrible. And where I have a problem is you get on a live stream, not even showing your face, you're laughing, you're smoke, smoking up the shishka or whatever it is, and shisha, whatever, I don't know, I don't smoke that stuff, and you're laughing, having the best time ever, no face show, and getting donations from people. And it's not that I have a problem with people receiving, you know, super thanks or chats or anything on YouTube, it's more the fact that you probably wouldn't be receiving in the same quantity or the same amount if some of these people didn't feel bad for you. And I, so that to me is just a medical scam. You use it to gain sympathy, okay? Because I think you're very concerned that it's gonna be some really bad stuff and people are actually going to leave and unsubscribe from your channel when they hear how much you've abused. And I, I can't even say some of these words, but the um, lack of kindness towards animals and behaviors that you've just demonstrated. Anyway, I don't try to get into all your drama, but let's continue. Example, my life is really not that interesting, nor is my content no, to warrant really three content hours content. of an in-depth character study that these creators fabricate. Not only that, they try to analyze me from what seems to be a psychological approach or, uh, you know, about my eating disorder or other matters when they're not even qualified to do that. Chantal, documentary filmmakers do not necessarily have to have degrees in medicine in order, like myself, to have A or health sciences or, you know, to be able to make a comment about your problematic eating behaviors. And you are the one to be the first person out there talking about your EDs all the time. So if you did not want ever people to talk about it, which is why I'm so hesitant to even mention what I'm going to mention today, and I'm hoping because I'm such a small creator, it just kind of gets not really spoken about. Because for me, I don't really like to talk about these things. I like to be a little bit, you know, more guarded about my information. But I'll let you continue. Being some edgelord living in your parents' basement, reading Kiwi Farms all day, does not make you a credible source of information. You are not doctors, you are not therapists, and you are certainly not experts on my life. So each of these dumb documentaries start... Even if they were doctors or therapists, Chantel, you have a long history of not listening to those folks either. So you are somebody who is uh, oppositionally defiant. It's off with some dramatic cinematic intro. Imagine, like, how am I that interesting? Anyway, I guess I'm flattered. Scammers are interesting. So the music is super annoying because it sets the tone of sadness, hopelessness, drama, regret. Again, speculating that we as the subjects feel that way about our lives. Maybe some do. That's their problem. I don't. And here's why. And here's why I don't care if people cancel me, unsub, make four-hour documentaries about me. 
It's because I know I'm human. I know I'm flawed. I didn't, I've heard some of these parts, which is why I came into here. I didn't specifically remember the part where she talked about the canceling and the unsubscribing. Oh, she is absolutely scared. There is no doubt about that. She is absolutely petrified. And I think she's getting more kind of feeling backed in the corner because there's more of us who have professional backgrounds and degrees who are starting to shine a spotlight on this problematic creator because that's one of the problems, tell and tell, when you get a little bit closer to 100,000 subs, is that the spotlight goes on to you, as well as all of the problematic behaviors you had in the past. And that is just one of the things that anybody who is going to suddenly thrust themselves into any notoriety, and you have because you've done things in order to get views and people to your channel and lost your time at YouTube and came back. So you've done things that are going to cause enough of a buzz and enough of a stir. And it just, you know, keeps continuing. So we use this more to sort of highlight to people where you shouldn't have things happen. What decisions shouldn't you make in life? And you're a great example of that, Chantel. I don't know whether you've had regrets or not, but I do think you regret what your weight is currently. And your blood sugar. Show me one person with a perfect life or past, things, and I'll shut up. Just one. God made obstacles for us as tests. Life is personal, and each individual has their <laughs> own tailored path. Yeah, okay, so unless, go. and this is key, unless you are living in that person's shoes or life path, you really cannot say what you would do or how you would react to certain situations because you are not living it. You will always be looking from the outside in, and that gives you a very limited view. Trust me. Chantel, I'm just going to let you know, you sound extremely sanctimonious. Second, I have not done anything you know, you don't have so right terrible to as to warrant that much criticism. Yes, you have. I'm sorry, but it's true. People pick apart every little detail. Irrelevant, trivial details. If I play a video game I suck at the first time I play it as a, you know, a first-timer amateur, which is normal, that somehow warrants a five-hour live stream. Uh, Similarly with these documentaries, a three-hour ordeal on me eating pasta and going on and off diets and talking about my abuser and low-key victim shaming. Okay. Sorry, former now, abuser. Now, this is where... I'm going to have words with Chantel. Sorry, former abuser. This new series about to come out, again, This has this ridiculous cinematic trailer. And the first sentence from the intro song they so carefully chose for it uh, starts with basically, you are the reason your father wasn't there. Nice choice of song. Blaming a child for their father being a deadbeat absent parent, it's never the child's fault. I can tell already by the stage that was set with this trailer, this will also be a load of crap series. Well, foodie, I'm just going to let you know, they know how to trigger you. Just giving you a heads up. You need to be more protective. But nonetheless, it's very lucrative because there's a lot of haters who will eat it up with a fork and spoon. Like I said, beating a dead horse. We already heard my life story. We already blamed me for dropping the charges, which if you simply use Google, many women in narcissistic abusive situations do that. It's the past. I don't live there anymore. You are reliving someone's trauma and someone's past for your own gain. It's weird and all too common. Now, this is where, sadly, I'm going to have to stop you Chantel and I am going to have to kind of have a word and I don't think that I think there's a lot of messy history and there was a lot of abuse of substances at the time when you filed your charges against the person in question and so that in itself is very problematic because the things that people do when they are under the influences of uncontrolled narcotics and drugs and, you know, so forth, their behaviors can be pretty out there. So I think you need to be reflective about that time. And you talk about it being in the past, but you affected a lot of people with that. 
and you also are almost using information about victims in order to protect yourself. And that to me is hugely problematic. And just even filing charges or even trying to use sort of the cover and protection of being a survivor of domestic and intimate partner is something I think you need to tread with very carefully. And I think going forward, you need to continue treading with it very carefully. And I'll tell you a couple of the reasons in my background and I'll make it really quick because I think when people just talk about things like this, people just, you know, turn off, especially when you're a funny channel. And now I'm talking about something serious on a serious nature. A couple of things about my past not dissimilar to yours. I also had a teenage mother. My mother had me at 17 years old. I also had my parents did marry but divorced and I ended up in another country with a stepfather who I was not particularly close to who traveled a lot for work and I was in a foreign country. My young mother was very unhappy and I never saw my real father but one time by accident ever after that. And I certainly can understand how hard that can be. I don't think trying to use these types of situations to your benefit in order to gain sympathy from people is a good thing. Another thing that isn't dissimilar is that, and this is where it's gonna get hard, and I hesitate to even talk about this because it could be used against me and against my channel and against who I am as a person. And so to kind of hear somebody like you, you don't, you just like, oh, it's in the past. It, when you really have experienced it to such an extent that even talking about it, it's such a public forum, close to 20 years on, is really hard. And so for you to have press charges and then drop them and then talk about how many victims don't press charges is true. But I hope at the time when you went and pressed charges that it was legitimately because you feared for something rather than misusing the services and the trust of the police in order to file a false report and that's why you dropped the charges because you knew potentially that it could be seen as a false report and that could get you in more problems. And so, I um, personally, you know, and I'm somebody who would be considered educated, um, but probably not dissimilar, made some not great choices with partners over the years. My first husband was an alcoholic and a drug addict who used cocaine. We married very young. He was involved in media and is still a very well-known celebrity in his own country of origin. And that's really all I want to say about that. Very bad time. I was married for seven years. It was not a pleasant experience and it was really hard and I was living in a different country at the time, and so I have experience of being married and living in another country to somebody. But I also understand because I had a spouse who was very addicted to alcohol and drugs and who had no desire to change his behaviors. And so that said, I probably made some more bad choices, including one that had in 2007 an incident that took place in my home that was witnessed by my neighbors and fortunately for me the neighbors did actually call the police and I had had the police called to my house more than one time before that 
with this particular boyfriend and I had, and this is here in the United States, and had probably hidden in closets and stayed really quiet with him and had times where he was, you know, threatening to unalive himself in his apartment and had, you know, the police were called because they could hear me trying to stop him from doing that and seeing your person that you care about walking around extremely crazed out carrying a gun is particularly frightening. There's other things that I went through that I don't care to share. Um, but I will share this because I hope Chantel that if you're going to continue to use your victimhood, that you really do think about those who have experienced these things. And maybe you don't try to wear it as a badge of honor, because I certainly don't. And I think for the friends of mine who also have been through these things, who didn't end up in the situation quite where I got to with mine, have, um, I don't even know if I can listen to this lady after I tell this story. I think I'm going to cut her off after this because she just... <sighs> talks a bunch of nonsense afterwards. And it's so hard to just know that she's out here and manipulating probably some good people. And when you're a healthcare provider and you care, you know, my, my path after all this happened to me was I became a registered nurse. And uh, it was funny because at the time when this happened, I was working at the, uh, as a volunteer with the YWCA and they do a lot of work with victims of, of SA and victims of DA and... I was a volunteer and would take phone calls in the middle of the night on Sunday mornings was my prime time. And there had even been times when the organization, which was a local chapter, had been worried about me because I, they could hear the noise of my, my ex in the background. And so they did get worried about that. Anyway, I was helping people, but at home I was going through DA myself and uh, had just, it was really hard. And I just, just wanted someone to care about me too. He was a good looking man and had a good job and a nice family and we had friends in common. I just couldn't understand how I have a person who could be so cruel. So, this day, I'm not going to show everything close up, but just to be a little bit different but booty, because I, I still have all this paperwork um, from 2007, referring to this case. And it became a case and went to court. So anyway, um, on the, and I'm not alone being an intelligent woman, I think, having experiences, but this is why I want you to be very careful out here, Chantal, when you're talking about, you know, what Mr. Snowflake's gonna do with releasing your documentary and using the situation that you had with the past and, you know, just exploiting it because you are very exploitative as a person. You aren't particularly interesting, but some of your behaviors are very problematic and something that should be shown in society so that we can teach young people or other people to keep away from people like you basically so anyway and i want to wrap this up because i can't really talk much more about this and i just kind of want to finish this up so i don't know if this was the date it actually happened or the date this got filed but on the back in april of 2007 so it's coming up now i had a uh, protective order emergency protective order that was issued for me against my boyfriend because of this him coming into my house he had been living with me and I had asked him to leave my home and he was 
obviously upset. He had to move back with his parents and it had been a couple of weeks and he was obviously trying to finagle his way back in, which is what they always try to do. I really didn't want him back, but I didn't want problems either. I was very, and I had very few to no support system. My family weren't there for me. And, you know, sometimes your friends all, when this all expired that day, I had a lot of friends that were there, but it was tough. I was fortunate I did. And, you know, anyway, so on the 17th, this the, the, the protective order for 72 hours was issued to keep him away from my house because he ran away when, when he was seen here at my home. And I don't want to go into a lot of details because it's too hard for me to talk about. And I'm going to read the statement that, that went along with it. So anyway, I was told I needed to go to the courthouse you know, because they would go to court pretty quickly about this for the protective order and whether he was guilty of um, DA. And um, so on the 17th of April, which coincidentally was like a day after my first wedding anniversary, so just like all the dates of that disastrous marriage, um, I... Um, I went to the court to get this petition for a protective order. And I, so I had to go to the courthouse in Virginia, in Virginia to get that. And uh, they issued it. And, um, you know, that's what happened on that day. Like I said, I don't really want to have the details seen. I'm not trying to dox anybody. But just I do have all this paperwork. And so this was the preliminary and the what was stated when I went in. And uh, he was seen as a cohabitant at the time, though. He was at his parents' house. Some of his belongings were here, and he had been having residence here. But uh, he stated that, actually, this was on the 14th of April 2007. Um, my ex came to my house. An argument took place in which he um, smashed items in my home. Um, he then physically stopped me from leaving my home. Uh, he then put his hands around the uh, esophageal area of my body and uh, began to throw um, furniture out onto the patio. Um, and obviously was at such an intense level that the neighbors had to call the police. Things that had preceded this in the past was that he had pointed a in front of him to my face. He had um, made, had said that he was going to unalive both of us if I had called the police. He had, I didn't even remember half of this. I mean, it's coming back. I just, let me on the face, no, you know, had me, put me around the house, kicked me in very private parts of my body when I was on the floor. Oh God, I forgot about that. Broke a finger. And, uh, he also tried to, um, Obviously, you know, stopped me from breathing in some ways. Lots of property damage. Um, lots of threats to my vehicle. Um, obviously, the repercussions were seen on me physically. He also, one time, um, took my dog and did not tell me. And so I ran around my neighborhood for an extended period of time crying and looking for my dog, thinking that he might have harmed my dog. And then he came back and said he found my dog all the way up the street, and my old dog never would have done that. And, uh, yeah, that's what happened then. So, anyway, I had the public attorney, or the Commonwealth attorney, and he didn't want me to go ahead. He just, you know, my ex had a attorney with him. His family had money. Sorry, the papers were in front of there. Uh, my, his family had uh, money. 
and uh, they advised me to just you know take the let him take the plea and just to kind of you know walk away but my attorney looked like he didn't want to do anything but a really old good friend of mine was with me that day and she said to me no this is this is your this, this is your moment to actually say something and so I ended up saying no I want to go into that courtroom and they said some you know, they tried to paint me to be a terrible person. And so I know what it feels like to be, tried to be painted as a terrible person and not to feel that way. So I can understand how you feel alone in some way, Chantel. You know, my mum was all right, everything around. But I did have my friend and a lady from the YWCA came with me to court that day and helped me be brave that day. Because I didn't have the attorney or the money, a lot of times you're being represented by the state and they're just tired, they don't want to deal with it. But the police officer told me, which is true, that I, I was rare because I actually did prosecute and I did go ahead. And he was found um, guilty of A and B to a family member and I uh, was given a two-year protective order he then came and left like a, about a month or so after that, left like a thousand dollars at my house. And I ended up, uh, a friend of mine said, just give it back. I said, no, I need that thousand dollars. So I kept the money and I went and I um, just kept it, didn't say anything. Another neighbor told me that he would be in the parking lot watching me, and I was totally unaware. And then another, I was in a sandwich shop very close to here, and he suddenly came in because it was a public place and was trying to talk to me and wanting to reach out to me. So he tried, and I just froze up. I didn't know what to do. And I always carried my protective order in the car with me. Just why this thing is so crumpily looking over here because that was the one I carried in here. And so I just froze and just let the conversation and he left. And then I called the police and let them know that he had come up and spoken to me. And it had not been the first time. He'd spoken to me, I believe, also in a gym. And they took him back to court and he was not found guilty, which they should have because he violated the protective order. So yeah, that's kind of what happened to me. And so I hope I don't ever have to talk about that ever again. And the only thing that I can think that, you know, afterwards is that I did get support from a women's shelter for about a year or so afterwards and went every week to get support and you know didn't seem like I you know should be there because you think that somebody who's educated or has you know a home or any of these things shouldn't be the person who's having to experience that but we all and it's such an important thing to talk about especially coming up to Valentine's and after a time when a lot of people were having to live very close to one another and some of the things weren't as rosy and as fun or as meaningful as some experiences were for other people who found themselves locked down during those times. So anyway, I don't think I can hear anymore from Chantel. I just, she's very exhausting, you know. I just hope that my story helps people um, to say that you can come and be strong. You don't have to use it as your story. You can use other stories like, well, I know my glasses are filthy. Um, you can use other stories like uh, traveling the world like I have or having been to uh, back to school and gotten another degree or made great friends that doesn't have to be your story or started a little YouTube channel and having time trying to teach people about health and 
educate them about how to take care of their bodies and have a little bit of a laugh at the same time because it's a big space and it's hard to get through all the noise. But would you see, and my main goal has always been to call out people who I think are problematic, who are using people for their gain. And even if you've been through really hard things in your life, and most of us and a lot of us have been, so you should always remember that you are not alone when you talk about it, and not to try to use that unless you're using it to build something positive. So if you are using your experience in order to help other women and to bolster other women and to teach other women that you can get through it and it doesn't have to be the thing that defines you, then that's okay. Anyway, I just appreciate if you even got to the end of this today. Um, yeah, I'll help you back. I was going to do some <laughs> glitter and lasers, fun Instagrams. I, I may um, do that. <laughs> we'll see. But anyway, I hope everyone is taking care of themselves. And uh, this is just a one-off in the content. I just had to address this one with um, this particular very problem creator who is going to try to use this uh, particular story and narrative as she tries to defend herself against a probably pretty serious uh, revelations that are going to come out of this documentary. And uh, just remember that you don't have to be defined by it. Okay? All right. You guys take care.